G'day fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today I am indeed going back to Invicta. So bring on the pitch fox. How long has it been since I have touched an Invicta for review? I don't know actually, but this one I'll tell you is made available courtesy of William who very kindly uh, came forward, a local uh, enthusiast and supporter, a guy I sold a watch to, and he, he's actually now uh, lending me a watch to review. So thank you to William for making this particular piece available. So let's just get into this box, which, you know, it's the typical yellow faux leather Invicta, which you will have seen in some of my other reviews if you're keen on Invicta watches. Typical, just a tag in there with desiccant powder in this case. Uh, there's no manual in this case because I think it is actually a third party or grey retailer. Okay, so that's the box. Let's just put that aside and show this to you guys. So guys, this is none other than the Invicta 62 Mass or 62 Max, more like it. This is what I like to call it. Uh, this is the uh, 29563 is the model number but if you have any doubt uh, about what it copies I'm going to put uh, a picture of the Seiko 62 mass update uh, the large size one which I did a little while back and you can see it's almost a one-to-one -one copy yes the materials are different the finishing is different but you know I think there's no doubt where it gets its chops from uh, so that one was the Seiko SPB 053 or SBDC 053 depending on uh, you know what you call it uh, now the the original 62 mass which uh, this watch and the previous watch updates uh, or homages was uh, of course the the 1960s diver the first Seiko diver the 62 mass uh, this one is my 54 which I reviewed quite a while back which is much more of a slavish homage right 37 millimeter case this is what that vintage size would have been uh, just put it side by side to let you see how ridiculously larger the modern updates are, right? Not, not quite anywhere near the same as the vintage size that it used to be. Um, so the MSRP of this particular watch uh, is 695, 695 Invicta. You know, who is going to ever pay that for an Invicta like this? Nobody, I hope, in the world. On sale, I found this for 60 USD and I imagine that is going to be the usual acquisition price for this particular watch. Um, right, let's talk about the movement. So movement, you guessed it, it is the NH35A. So many of my Invicta uh, are NH35A and this one is no different. It does however have that pretty yellow rotor, which uh, some people don't like, but I don't mind that they've uh, decorated that rotor. At least it takes some value, some uh, effort to do that. Stats down the left there. Uh, in this case, I will show you the date. So the quick set date in the whiteboard window at the three o'clock position there. Of course, it's going to be a white disc with black writing. I don't expect that Invicta would do a color match date wheel for a watch like this. Rated accuracy down the left and in use, pretty good. Plus four a day, plus four seconds a day in the week that I have had this. So that is very, very acceptable and I'm very happy. Uh, I would be very happy with any watch which comes out of the box uh, like that. Even a chronometer, this is within spec. Okay, let's talk about the case now. So the case here is uh, 46 millimeters, no smaller than 46 mils, 316L steel. The bezel is slightly bigger, ever so slightly at 46.5. Uh, thickness is 14 millimeters to the top of that flat glass there. And the lug width is 22 millimeters between those uh, lugs there for the straps. Lug to lug distance is pretty massive. In this case, no smaller than 55 millimeters between my thumbs there. Okay, so that's a very long lug to lug distance. Overall weight because of this light and nylon strap, it's only 115 grams total on the scales. Okay, so let's talk about the finishing now. The finishing is very similar to the, the 62 Mass Homage, the SBDC 053 that I reviewed before. So circular brushing on the top surface of the case here transitioning onto longitudinal brushing on the side and that is flanked by two polished surfaces uh, but let me assure you this is nowhere near a Zeratsu polishing on the uh, original Seiko this cannot ha hold a candle on that at all bottom finishing is actually circular brushing as you can see there 
with that uh, screw-in display case back and what is actually a push crown. It's not a screw-in crown, right? It winds in the zero position here. This watch is rated 100 meter water resistant and the problem with the push crown is that I wouldn't actually submerge it any more than superficial swimming. I would be very hesitant to do that unless I want to risk getting this water logged and a lot of uh, water resistant chart wouldn't recommend a 100 meter watch for diving anyway. All right, let's talk about the dial here. The dial here is a pretty gentle sunburst dial. You know, this is what this is. Uh, hopefully you can see, uh, you know, the, the sunburst in some of these macro shots and in the camera that I'm showing here. It's got applied polished quadrilateral markers or indices. Uh, it's got polished sword and broad, broad arrow hands for the hour and minute hands here. And it's got a pretty, pretty uh, simple stick uh, minute hand with loom on the counter lollipop there, uh, polished with black centers, all those hands which kind of make them look like they're kind of floating above the dial there. It's got tritonite, Invicta tritonite in all the usual spots. Tritonite is not great. It's probably worse in class and it definitely does not last through the night. And I'll put a blue shot for you to appreciate how it looks like, at least when it's initially charged. Okay, around the dial, 120 click unidirectional bezel with an aluminium uh, insert that you can see there. Let's just hear it. 10. 20, right? Okay, so, and, and actually, I gotta say, this, this uh, bezel for a $60 watch is actually not bad. It's probably the equal of any uh, other $60 watches, and Invicta do pretty, you know, pretty good bezels for the money that you have to pay for. It's actually pretty good. Uh, the crystal is none other than mineral glass. You're not going to get sapphire in a $60 Invicta uh, ever. You know, I've never seen that. So that's what you can expect for a watch like this. All right, moving on to strap. Nylon rope style, right, with a belt type buckle. Uh, and this is a bit of a shocker, I have to say. You know, it doesn't thread well with the spring bars. It's got this I guess glue or burn part of the finishing is not fantastic, but I am going to put it on the wrist to show you guys anyway. And there it is on my 17 centimeter wrist. Um, this is quite irritating to put on. It's a bit fiddly. I can't even figure out what's the best way to put that in the keeper, but you know, for what it's worth, that is how it looks like. I actually really don't like this at all. Uh, but the good thing is that you can take this off easily and swap it out for other straps. So I'm going to show you two others here. Uh, the first one is actually from Watch Straps Australia, which is uh, from a guy called Brad who's based right here in Perth actually. So any Western Australians do reach out and support Watch Straps Australia if you uh, wish to. You know, for uh, the money, about 30 Australian dollars, uh, the premium seatbelt NATO strap that I'm showing here is pretty good value for the money, you know, not bad at all for what you're getting, I would say, uh, in comparison with other seatbelt NATOs, this is just as good, you know, in terms of the feel and quality. Uh, the hardware could be better, but the overall quality is not bad. The second one I want to show you guys is uh, from Vario, and this one is going to be their soft silicon rubber uh, perforated style strap. It's pretty good. I do like these ones, and they suit a dive watch style uh, you know, piece like this pretty well, and it's very comfortable. I really have liked swapping this out to my other pieces. Okay, guys, so that's the, the watch as well as demonstration on other straps. Let's just get it off the wrist and talk about the pros and cons, what I liked. And it's actually fairly challenging to talk about what I like about this particular watch. It's somewhat better than a fully superficial homage. I will give it that, you know, the quality of the case finishing uh, and fit, uh, as well as the dial, you know, the, the actual way they put it together, the dial is not bad. And I've said the bezel is also uh, pretty good. All this with the Seiko movement you can have for around 60. Uh, you know, I think again, Invicta give you pretty good value. I think there's very little doubt about that. And it's a good watch to be able to swap out to different straps. It, it does lend itself very well to that because I, I would be surprised if anyone wants to keep on this strap and use it, certainly I wouldn't myself. Um, the weaknesses, well look, it's an Invicta, right? People might spit on you if they see you wearing an Invicta. Uh, fortunately, you know, the people I hang around don't know about Invicta, but if you hang around people who have something against Invicta, you may get some comments uh, to your dislike. Um, you know, I, and I think it's another 
almost outright copy of another watch, right? It is a copy of that Seiko, but without the chops, it doesn't have the DLC bezel. It doesn't have Zeratsu finishing by any means. It doesn't have Sapphire. So it's kind of a superficial copy in some extent, despite the quality of the case. And then lastly, one of the, the big gripes I have about this is that it says professional right at the back. It's supposed to be a pro diver and there's actually no water resistance credentials by any means. It's not even trying to give you a dive rating. It's got a push crown and I don't think that's acceptable. You know, why didn't they just do a screw in crown? Uh, and then of course, uh, I will throw in again, that strap is a shocker. It is a piece of crap, I have to say. First time I've used that to describe a part of the watch, but this is a shocker, I, I, admittedly. So guys, there we go. My review of the Invicta 62 Mass 29563. Let me know your thoughts about this, about Invicta in general, or any other piece you own from the brand. Would love to hear from you. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.